so yeah, um, I'm going to talk to you about the location of aid, um, about putting development on the map. And when I speak about development here, it's not software development, it's uh, international development. Um, like, I mean, how to, to reduce poverty um, is, is what we're going to talk about. Um, so I thought, as we speak about poverty, I'll have a quote of another South African um, who unfortunately passed away yesterday. Um, and um, yeah, you can read it here. Like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It is man-made and it can be overcome and er eradicated by the actions of human beings. And eradicating poverty is what the World Bank um, tries to do. Uh, we have two main goals and it's ending extreme poverty um, and the concrete goal is to decrease the percentage of people living with less than $1.25 uh, a day to no more than 3% by 2030. So it's quite an ambitious goal. Um, but not only do that, but also promoting shared prosperity, which means um, promoting uh, income growth of the bottom 40% of the population in each country. So um, that means that uh, I mean, there are a lot of income differences in countries. Um, and for example, in a country like India or China, um, it, we have very big regional differences uh, in poverty levels. Um, so you need to look at the location of where poverty is. Um, and I mean, it could be differences even in uh, within the country or within a city even. I mean, even like a city like Malmö, there are differences um of different parts of the city where where um how income levels are and so on so that's the things that that the world bank uh, works with and uh, yeah so i'm gonna talk to you about why the the location of aid is so important for for governments and uh, aid donors um and this is first of all to better understand uh, within country uh, aid allocation um how aid is distributed within the country um, to identify underserved regions um, and, and also it's to better monitor on the ground progress of development activities. If you don't know where the activities are, it's, it's difficult to monitor them, of course. Um, and also to enable donors to better coordinate and harmonize their efforts so they don't um, duplicate their work. Um, and also to enable visualizations of the data and uh, enhance accessibility uh, at the local level. So I'm going to talk to you through um, uh, some of the World Bank aid programs that are supporting uh, mapping and different geospatial initiatives uh, in this talk. Um, and first of them is uh, called Mapping for Results. Um, you can find that on maps.worldbank.org. Um, it's, um, it was an exercise that was done um, to uh, map all of the World Bank projects all over the world. Um, so you can see the locations of, of World Bank finance projects. Uh, and um, on the um, background uh, you can see poverty levels, um, as in um, uh, and other sub-national millennium development goals um, to compare yeah, where are the projects compared to uh, what, what poverty and other data looks like. Um, and building on that um, is another initiative called Open Aid Partnership, which is what I work with uh, specifically in the World Bank. Um, and um, it's um, yeah, also mapping of aid, but this time it's not only the World Bank projects, but all the aid donors. And so far we've been working in four countries, Bolivia, Kenya, Nepal, and Malawi. Um, and <laughs> this is our new website that we're going to be launched in um, well, pretty soon. <laughs> um, and um, where you can see the location of aid. And the objectives of this partnership is to yeah, strengthen the capacity of partnered countries to collect, curate, and publish development data in an open and accessible format so that everyone can access and know the, the location and uh, information about aid projects. And we also developed this open aid map that I showed you to visualize the locations. 
Uh, and then finally, we build the capacity of citizens, civil society, and the media to understand, um, use, and give feedback on open development data. And the list down there is all of our partners. It's um, around 20 or so uh, countries and, and uh, uh, foundations and NGOs. Um, and Sweden is one of them. Um, that's how uh, they found me <laughs> when I was working for Swedish CETA um, with this partnership. Um, and then they stole me. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, what we do is basically turning the aid reporting upside down. Traditionally, it's the donors that report uh, what the money it is that they're giving to countries. But this is uh, the countries themselves saying what they are receiving. Um, so you get a full picture and they usually actually have better data than, than others, uh, other ones. Uh, so this is uh, from the new mapping platform that we're... Um, developing and where you can see uh, the darker uh, shaded um, um, regions are the one with higher poverty level and then you can see the locations of projects so it's it's mainly um, directed to the to poorest areas but you also need to look at for example population so uh, like you see up in the right corner is a very dark area but there's not many people live in there either so it's not uh, <laughs> that big of a deal that uh, there are not many projects there so um, yeah and to say we want to try and understand where different donors work this was an exercise that we did um, when uh, Ban Ki-moon and, and the president of the World Bank traveled together to um, Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, so we took uh, the data that we had and uh, uh, from some of the UN agencies and, and mashed them up um, to see where, uh, where the UN was working and where World Bank was working. Uh, and you can see that uh, World Bank is more uh, in the West where there are poorer areas and the UN is more in the in the east where there are fragile states um, and so on so it's it's a good exercise to see um, yeah where different uh, organizations are working um, yeah and you can also track for example here is is um, the let's see accessibility to clean water and and uh, overlaid with with the uh, water projects so you can use this data to track progress on, on of the development on a more local level. So this is from Malawi. Um, yeah, and then, as I said, we also uh, try to excite citizens about this data. And we did the um, data literacy boot camps in, in Malawi, Nepal, and Bolivia in, in June. We had around 300 participants uh, from uh, civil society and, and media uh, being trained in how to uh, clean and uh, visualize uh, data and, and so on. So that was very, very fun. <coughs> um, and just as an example of um, things you can... <coughs> sorry, my voice is, is uh, losing it here. <laughs> um, this wasn't from the boot camp, but I just wanted to show you um, an example of, of how you can visualize data on a geographical way. Um, so this is the number of inhabitants per doctor. Um, and you can see that, for example, in some areas of Africa, there are 50,000 people per one doctor. Um, so there are quite big differences in the world in that sense. Um, Another World Bank initiative uh, is um, yeah, um, it's called the Geo Results, uh, where you can see uh, stories from from uh, um, small farmers. Um, <coughs> yeah, where you can see videos and pictures and so on from from the specific lo project location. So I mean, maps and locations they can really tell stories as well. Um, and then also it's uh, important to have data on um, social infrastructure in, com in uh, countries, so things such as hospitals and schools and roads and such. Um, and that's very important for planning of um, uh, public services and engaging with citizens and also for disaster preparedness, for example, um, where there's, for example, been... been um, 
um, in OpenStreetMap in uh, in places like Haiti or or um, now the Philippines, where there are like crisis mapping communities that go in and and map things. There it was like afterwards, but there are also World Bank uh, funded projects where they trying to do it uh, beforehand. For example, in Nepal, uh, where which would probably be struck by a big earthquake. Um, in the coming years, so they try to, to do the mapping now instead. So, um, But unfortunately, the, the data that the governments themselves are not usually very um, accurate. Um, there was We did this exercise on looking at uh, school and hospital locations in, in Kenya from their open data portal, and it turned out that it was only 50% um, accuracy of the data. Um, so you could see like that a school were supposed to be somewhere and then it was just out in a field or, or something. Um, and the same thing with roads. Um, there, like The data said that there was a road there going through the water, for example. So um, <coughs> it's important to try and improve this data. And we've been working on this um, uh, idea to... Um, oh, another slide first. <laughs> <laughs> before the idea. Uh, OpenStreetMap, again, um, can be used there for, for crowdsourcing of spatial, spatial data. This is from, from Tanzania, um, an informal settlement, like a slum area, where um, they had uh, the community help map there. That, that the only thing that was on that map, like a year before they started, was the, the um, white roads. Um, so they really help to improve that data but it's I mean that was they put quite a lot of effort into <laughs> doing that and training and everything so we've been thinking about this idea to try and use travelers um, to, to track um, they could record road data um, using their uh, GPS and their smartphones uh, and let that like just let it run and, and, uh, and track the data um, and you could also like rate routing, uh, rate the the conditions of the road, uh, and so on. Or you could um, also gather the locations of the hospitals and schools and water points and so on. Um, so that's an idea that we've been been working on a bit. And I don't know if anyone is uh, thinks it sounds interesting for the hackathon or something. I can um, provide you with some details. Um, unfortunately, we haven't. It seems like we won't be ha have time to to continue working on this. So we're hoping that the idea is up for grabs. We can. <laughs> we did a lot of research on on who could use the data and so on. So um, yeah, I think it's an interesting, fun idea. And uh, yeah, I thought I'll end with a quote from Nelson Mandela I, I <laughs> as well. Um, Overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity, it's an act of justice. It is the protection of a fundamental human right, the right of dignity and a decent life. While poverty persists, there is uh, no true freedom. So that was my talk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.